What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. This is Real Estate Uncensored, the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and become the rock star agent in your market. And we're going to take some questions today. So we are guestless. Uh, it is just me and Gregory. Uh, the junior grandmaster himself is in the co-pilot seat with me today, and we're going to be taking your questions both live and questions from the lead gen scripts and objections group. So guys, if you are not already a member, make sure to uh, go and request to join that fabulous Facebook group that's run by a good friend of ours, Aaron Wittenstein, because we tech, take questions from that group all the time here on the show like we are today. We're also mm -hmm. going to talk a little bit, Greg, about uh, morning routines, your experiences, my experiences lately with morning routines. You are, uh, I am struggling. You are uh, doing it like a boss. And so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that and some of the things that we've learned from uh, from coaching and uh, and co uh, training people in our Get Now Business class. So we've got a lot to uh, to get to. So how are you today? I'm doing well, man. Glenn Twiddle, what up? Pimp player from Down Under. Mm -hmm. uh, our boy uh, from uh, Glenn, fantastic trainer and coach, uh, Andrew Shears here as well. well. You guys are awesome. Love you guys in the house. Dude, I had a very interesting weekend, Johnson. Okay. Uh, started out Thursday night, chewing away at some regular food at my house, right? Nothing big, nothing weird. Woke up in the morning feeling like dog shit warmed up, put into a bag, you set on fire and then stepped on. Uh, okay. I uh, got I set myself a case of food poisoning, which I felt like like Lucifer reaching into my stomach and twisting my guts around. It was horrible. Had that way for like three days. Went over and saw my girlfriend Lily over in in, uh, in the, on the peninsula. Went to this little roadhouse cafe. Anyone on my Facebook page saw the uh, saw that I found Sasquatch up in the hills. So okay. uh, you know Bigfoot is alive, and I can prove it. I have a photo of his furry ass. Um, and then on Sunday, dude, I went for uh, well, Saturday's kind of chilled and kind of kicked it and then went uh, to the city with Lily for kind of just a like a moving dinner, like one place for appetizer and drink and dinner and then dessert and so on and so forth. And then I think I have the coolest girl on earth, dude. Because then after dinner, she's like, So, Greg, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know, let's go hit a bar, grab, grab a drink, chill. She's like, Want to go to a strip club? I'm like, Is this a test? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Is this a test? <laughs> she's like no let's go to a strip club i'm like oh are you sure she's like yeah let's go so she's i'm like you're a bitch she's like no i'm like all right let's go i'm like okay. i am so dying and she's like but you can't look at any of the girls i'm like it's like oh, going to church not. and say you can't over look at the bible are you shitting me i mean come on that's what you're there to do so okay. we bounce around to a couple of different strip clubs very disappointing i gotta tell you walk into a first strip club and it was like one girl we were the only guests like one girl in the booth, like doing music, and like one shaggy creature up on the on the on the pole doing something. <laughs> the Sasquatch from the dance. restaurant. <laughs> yes, it was female Sasquatch doing okay. her pole dance. Uh, okay. We decided this is bullshit. We we decided to leave. We talked to the manager like, hey, can we bail? <laughs> They're like, like yeah, but you don't get a refund. We're like, that's bullshit. He's like, why well, can get you in the club across the street? She's like, oh, okay, so we go across the street, right? Um, even worse, dude. I swear to God, this is the feeling that I got when I walked in there. No strippers. No bartender, one or dude at the bar, that's it. And it just loud, bad music with lights going. And it felt like the feeling I got was like, you know, when you go to a house party, nose pinch, three minutes deep. Um, dude, you know the house, the feeling we get when you stay too long at a house party and you're the last one there, but the music's still going? No, because like I've been the first one out at any house party ever. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, but well, that's what it felt like. So Lily's like, we're going to stick around. We're $40 deep into this investment. I'm like, fuck that investment. We're cutting bait. This is a bad deal. We're going. Literally, no shippers. Anywhere to be seen. It's like cockroaches. The lights turned on and brrr, they scattered into the, into the darkness. <laughs> Never to be seen from again. Ah, so that was my weekend. Wow. Okay. Uh, I have, n I have no response to that. I, I might share what I did this weekend, but we'll get to that in a second. So I want to, <laughs> I want to dive into a, a question real quick here. Um, so Eric Beck asks, what are some, uh, some of your most powerful one or two sentence value statements that you use over the phone when you're asking for an appointment with a, a home seller? So what are my one or two value propositions mm -hmm. like yeah a couple of sentences for value statements that essentially he's looking for a way to um he's looking for a, like a magic phrase or a sentence that will convince them to have an appointment with him as an agent if they're selling their home so what i do when i typically do this is i uh, i i go into the us we team 
uh, phrasing when I start talking about it. You know, hey, we're, we're, we're really excited to work with you guys as we, as we go through the process of selling the home. What we'll do is we'll come on over and we'll take a look at your property together. Uh, after we take a look at it, you know, our next steps will be blah, blah, blah. I start already doing the assumptive close with the, with the plural you know, verbiage, you know, basically implying su subtly to the fact that um, this is already going to happen and not like saying mm -hmm. you're, this is my listing, sign the listing agreement, just mm -hmm. having that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that generally gets me in the door and I keep using that phrase throughout the entire, you know, entire thing. And I'll bring my, this is obviously the trifle, but I'll bring the trifle, the booklet and I'll say, this is Eileen, you know, she's going to be your main point of contact throughout the transaction. You know, you know, I give my little spiel. And so just yeah. to get into the door, start acting as if it is yours. Mindset is the number one thing for you to get in the door. So you have to have self-assurance, self-confidence that people were going to want to have you in the door. Now, if you go in like as meek as a mouse, then people are going to feel that energy on you and they're not going to want someone to be like that. They want someone who's like strong like bull. You know, they want someone who's going to be like own their space that they're around um, and take control of the situation. Because in all honesty, buying and selling a home is definitely a difficult thing that anyone goes through. I mean, just for mm -hmm. me buying a car three years ago, dude, I was intimidated as hell because I don't do it every day. I don't know where to sign. The contract's fucking seven feet long, literally. And you don't know what you're signing. They're doing the same thing, but it's a much more expensive proposition. So you have to be confident, 100% confident in your language, your attitude, your tonality. That'll get you in the door faster than any kind of script or tone, you know, tone or anything else. Yeah. All right. So that that's the sales answer to that. Let me give you the the marketing answer to that. The marketing answer to that is to come up with a value proposition that is unique to you, that that gives them a big idea, a big promise, or completely and totally eliminates their risk. Preferably both. Uh, that's why the, that's why the guarantee, that's why the, the, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll sell your home in X number of days or I'll sell it for free. Uh, or in like the case, the case of Todd Tremonti down in Dallas, the, the over under, uh, we guarantee that we'll sell it for over average list price and under average days on market, or we'll sell it for free or something like that. So essentially you're guaranteeing your performance and you're taking away their risk and you're, you're putting your performance guarantee into a quantifiable, like an actual metric that can be counted on, not just like, hey, if you're not happy, we'll, you know, we'll uh, cancel the listing agreement. That, like, that's, that's an easy thing. Um, but it, to actually put your performance down into a, a guarantee that nails you down to a specific metric and gives them a guarantee that takes away their risk if you don't measure up, that's pretty powerful. So, I mean, that, that's what I would lean towards coming up with um, mm -hmm. to get you in the door is make, some, make a big promise and take away 100% of the risk if you can. Now, you may not be able to make a, like a claim like, um, hey, if I can't sell your home, I'll buy it. Right. That's super simple. Although, by the way, all it takes to do that is to have a couple of investors in your pocket that are willing to make them an offer for 20 percent below market value. If you can't get the home sold in X number of days, like it's not that big of a deal. Like that's all you need to have in your pocket. But um, the, the marketing perspective on that is to be able to say, hey, look, uh, here's a big promise. Like Aaron is a great example. So when he calls up an expired, he's finishing off with something to the effect of like, hey, this is what we specialize in. My team actually specializes in helping uh, homeowners like you that have their home up on the market and it didn't sell. In fact, we've taken expired, you know, homes that have expired off the market after 367 days and turned around and sold them in as little as 27 days. Mm -hmm. So is that something, does that sound like that would be a benefit to you? Yeah, he's selling the dream. He's selling mm -hmm. the, the the end of the misery of having to go through the open houses, the brokers tours, the exposure, keeping the house mm -hmm. clean, the whole nine yards. They're like, oh God, yeah. please, for any, I'll do anything. Yes, 27 days sounds like a dream boat compared to the last 385,000 days that I've been on the market. It's yeah, mm -hmm. it, that is what people look for. We'll look at can you also do like a one day listing or a one weekend listing. You can, well, you can do a one day listing, a 24 hour listing, mm -hmm. but when you do the 24 hour listing, it is balls to the walls, value to and, and the exponential of a thousand. Right. And that was what you need to bring. And then after that, if they want to quit, they don't think they have the value. But I mean, if you dump it on them, like, mm -hmm. like, like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, There's especially no if you combine that with like a mega direction. open house, combine that with a mega open house and Facebook ads and a hundred directional signs. And like, you can really, you know, you can Blast. really bring the value in a 24 hour listing and, and completely blow them away. Mm -hmm. But you have to know exactly what you're doing. You've got to be able to, you know, step it up for those 24 hours. You're not going to have a family. I mean, you're going to be working so freaking hard because you've got to wow them beyond belief. And that works for some people, but it might not work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, start with what, what your, find out what your personality is. And then from that point, 
figure mm-hmm. out what you want to do in regards to blowing people's minds and really bringing value to, a, to the next level. Yeah, agreed. All right, so just want to take a step back and quickly thank Clifford uh, for watching. Jonathan Byron, who says he always starts these right before he sits down for dinner. So I'm guessing East Coast. Ooh. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Glenn Twiddle is watching. William Bowles, hello from New York City. You guys are awesome. Loyal listener. Wow. Thank you, William. We appreciate it. Adam Wallace, Jesus Rodriguez. And then Glenn has a good comment. He says, Matt, we found at least in Australia that those risk reversals sound impressive, but we haven't found that they impact sellers when said by agents that aren't positioned well. And for agents who are positioned well, those guarantees aren't needed. And I know I know what you mean. And he goes on to say, we tried them and we found that as soon as that's in their mind, a dodgy real estate agent saying stuff, it doesn't matter what they say, they aren't listening. Well, you're absolutely right about that. Once they mm-hmm. get the, the impression that you're dodgy. Um, I will say this, that some of the top agents in the country are all in um, an organization called Rate Radio and Television Experts. They all advertise on radio and television, as, a, as the name would reply, mostly mm-hmm. on radio. And what they found is that it takes that type of a guarantee, and so they always pair up a guarantee when they're li- when they're advertising on the radio for the you know like nine times out of ten because that's what it takes to get a response to a toll free recorded hotline to find out more about the guarantee. Then they're calling people back or they're getting people just call their team directly and say, hey, I want to meet with you about listing my home. Mm-hmm. Um, those agents have the best thing, which is they have all the positioning in the world, all the credibility in the world, and they have a risk re- reversal guarantee. So to me, that's that's kind of like you can't have one without the other. And if you are really positioned well, can you get away with not having a risk reversal? Absolutely. But I think it makes um, I think it makes your gives you even more of an incentive for them to meet with you to find out more about the guarantee program. Yeah, the guarantees are always sexy, but you got to be able to pull through on it. But yeah, I, I love it. I've been trying to get my team to pull the trigger on it, but we have I, I, since it's a, it's a democracy, democracy, not a dictatorship. It is a bit more of like Washington D.C. We move real slowly. Yeah, I was gonna say you can't even get your partners in the same room for like four weeks. All right. Now. So uh, let's go with this one. Chad Cromer has a good question. When door knocking to promote your open house, how many days before and typically what time? And then what are you leaving behind uh, to promote your open house when you're door knocking, Craig? Is it his open house or is it an open house? Uh, let's assume it's his. He didn't specify, but I'm assuming it's his. Uh, for an open house, I do it on Friday. Uh, there's going to be more people on Thursday or Friday afternoons. Uh, you'd want to bring a, you know, just a regular, you know, regular sheet of paper, you know, normal sheet of paper. And you're going to use both sides. Uh, what I would always go out with, I would say, in, you're invited to, all in huge letters, open house on Sunday from 1 to 4, you know, at this address. And so when I'm door knocking and people are, I'm like, knock, 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 hey, it's Greg McCann, McCann, Callahan, real estate team. Oh, no, we're not interested. And I'll just say, oh, no, no, I'm just inviting you to. And then they say, an invite? And the doors would naturally swing right back open as the easiest door knock on human on planet Earth. So you can have the invite on one side of the sheet and then have the information on the property, like the flyer on the other side of the sheet. But on the on that flyer, do not have the picture of the front of the house. OK, have a picture of something else in the home, the killer master bath, the backyard, the kitchen, uh, the fire pit, the pool, the entertainment area, you know, the living area, the man cave, something that they cannot see from the front of the house, because that's going to entice people to come into the home to see the rest of it. They can go see the fucking front of the house and just by driving man by the damn home. I mean, give them some incentive that piques that curiosity to go in. And to use whatever, like our picture on uh, Amir Lane, our, our $5 million listing, uh, our front photo, Midori, do you have the, you have the postcard on that one more close to you? Um, so, oh, shit, Johnny on the spot. Dude, so that is our front, that's our photo right there, the backyard with the pool mm. and everything else. So it, it's, 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 it's sexy pants, right? Yeah. And that's why we pay her the big bucks, by the way. She's just money. That's her yeah. nickname in the office is G Money, isn't it, Midori? <laughs> right now <laughs> um but i mean that's what i'm talking about and guys we got a call for a 10 i did the numbers on it today the the listing that i uh, cma I, I got called for matt off the off this postcard yeah roughly 10 million dollars goodness like it keeps going up every time i talk to you I, I ran i ran the numbers hard today and it's about a 10 million dollar property goodness from doing something like this because i'm in their club now so that's what i would do when you do the door knocking, and then if you wanted to really step it up, you can either do it Thursday or Friday afternoon, and then go back into the neighborhood and do a reminder with a coupon on the other side for thanking them for their for their time. 
the other open house is going to be on Sunday from one to four or do it on Sunday morning. You know, starting, let's say we start at uh, one. So get out there 10, 30, 11. That's okay. It's still plenty of time. You're not intruding at 10, 30 or 11. Door knock until the open house and then go put your sweaty ass in the air conditioning. Mm. Uh, and then hold the open house from one to four. Follow up with the leads from four to four thirty or five. Don't wait till Monday morning. And then do the, the secondary follow up on Monday morning. So that's what I would do with a little bit of follow up in there for the goodness. Okay, I like it. And then you can stack on top of that from a marketing perspective. You can stack um, targeted Facebook ads yes, on top of that for the open house. Yes, so you can do Facebook lives reminding uh, you know uh, Facebook that you're going to be there. You can do uh, Periscope for Twitter if, if you're heavy on Twitter. You can do Instagram lives if you're big on Instagram, showcasing a property. You can do that on all three platforms. You know, as a little tidbit and a teaser, you can also do a Facebook Live or Instagram or a uh, you know Periscope, whatever your flavor is, at the open house, um, so that everybody can see what's inside of it, and then do it again at the end. However, you want to do it, so that if people can't make it, they can at least see what the inside of the property looks like. Just there's a ton mm -hmm. of opportunities that we could do. Yeah, man, op open houses are. Cr I mean, they're they're crucial. They're critical. I don't know how many other c words I can come up with that for. Um, but that you can absolutely crush it with uh, with open houses. I mean, it's if you're in the right market and, and it's the right house and you choose that part of it carefully, I mean, you can really, really have, you know, I mean, you can build your entire business essentially off of uh, open houses. Um, RNA says, oh, I like this strategy. I'm doing tons of open houses now. Good. Um, and Amy Broghammer is watching us. What is up, Amy B., the what queen of uh, live video B. herself? That's right. What up, Amy B.? That's hey, right. If you guys aren't Amy, following her, make sure gotta, you're following her posts in the uh, lead gen description objections group. Yeah. And Amy, we got to confirm up for Inman, uh, all of us hitting up and doing the wine tasting. So don't forget about the small people. <laughs> don't forget about the small people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, this is a good one. Suzanne Wells, what day of the week do you believe is best to send mailings? Not only flyers, but especially personal notes. Um, I talked to a guy and, and we're, there's an interview with him coming out on the team building podcast here in a couple weeks. They send something like 2 million mailers, I think, is it a year? Might even be a month. Let's just say it's millions of mailers. Um, Thursday. Thursday is the best day. Really? Um, yeah. So they said by the time it gets there, usually gets around Tuesday of the following week. And so if you're going to send personal notes, um, yeah, Thursdays are a good day. You know, I found that no matter what day it is, I mean, as long as it lands not on like a Saturday or something where it gets swept right under the rug and nobody sees anything, Mondays are a little bit rougher to land because people are either coming back or they're hungover from the weekend, you know, from a trip or something, or they just don't care because you have to go to a nine to five flipping burgers at McDonald's and they're really not happy about reading about how nice your new listing looks like. Uh, Midweek, yeah, I would say, I think that would be, a, you know, Tuesday through Thursday would be a good day to send them out. We've, we've yeah. sent out ridiculous a large amount we've got hundreds of thousands of of uh of postcards maybe even like way high hundreds of thousands and just it's more along the message on the card than it is the okay. day hmm. you know and the type of market you have to read the market like this thing i don't know what that, what was it last week monday tuesday this thing landed i think it's landed on tuesday when did the cma on tuesday or whatever it is no wednesday wednesday because i did a podcast with you mm -hmm. so yeah Anyways, it varies yeah. in every marketplace. Yeah, that's true. But I would say for the most part, like if you're sending a personal note and you can send it on a Tuesday and you know it's going to get there to, to somebody in town, you know it's going to get there either the next day or the following day, I would make sure you send it out uh, no later than a Thursday. That way it just, it like you said, doesn't get swept under the rug of the weekend. So either send it Tuesday, Wednesday, or wait till like let's say Saturday and drop it in the mail so it gets to them the following week. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Everybody, right. do, a, do a beta test and get back to us, damn it. Yes, exactly. Go, please, go send thousands, hundreds of thousands of mailers and then tell us the results. On your um, dime, and then we right. will sell your results. This is how exactly. it's Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, so we just finished up um, the latest run of Get Now Business. Now, we have a week gap, right? So uh, so our next one is, uh, we're starting it on Tuesdays, and it starts August, I believe it's August 8th. So we've got a little bit of a gap where you guys can sign up, but we actually finished uh, the fourth session off of, of uh, the July run today. That was a lot of fun. We talked about LinkedIn. We talked about how to prospect for people on LinkedIn, how to build connections and how to build a referral network group 
on LinkedIn, how to join affinity groups. We talked about uh, the right way to do a Facebook group for a local uh, neighborhood or a local community. We broke down exactly what to do, exactly what content to put out there and what not to put out there, uh, mm -hmm. what not to do. Sadly, we used an existing real Facebook group uh, uh -huh. as the example. And please, uh, if you're if you're watching and you uh, get into getting out business and you find that we're using your Facebook as an example, uh, we're sorry. But we do uh, that love. We do, do that love. Um, so anyway, guys, go sign up for Get Now Business. It is $2.97. It is a simple four-step marketing plan to help you get uh, business in and, and put commissions in your pocket in the next 90 days uh, with zero cold calls, zero door knocking, zero crazy marketing budget. It's all zero to low cost or very little cost uh, in terms of marketing. So guys, go sign up for that. That is GetNowBusiness.com. Um, Glenn says more important that one sends than when one sends. I would yes. 100% agree with that, especially when it comes to handwritten uh, thank you notes and things like that. So uh, let's grab another question here real quick. This is from Susan Collins. She says, has anyone put together a buyer and seller seminar? Just looking for suggestions on content, especially the seller side and what can draw as much interest as possible, and then opinions on days of the week and attendance and yada, yada. So let's start with just the, the topic. Greg, I don't know if you guys have ever done that, the buyer and seller seminars. Have you done mm -hmm. that in the past? We've done buyer seminars, and uh, I've tried it with two different groups, uh, one with Wells Fargo and then one with, oh, crap, I forget who it was, but they fell flat on their face. I mean, yeah. very, very minimal showing up. Uh, I would, my recommendation would be this. If you're going to do a buyer seller, buyer, and then do a seller seminar, record a video, do a Facebook live, record a video, and then use that as a lead magnet and put, push it out into, into, into Facebook. And then they can click a link and they can go watch your YouTube channel to at no cost. So they can build rapport with you. Um, I think that might be the best possible opportunity. So you don't have to waste a lot of your time when it comes to uh, doing these over and over and over. If you have one, 10, four, zero people coming through, you know, they can watch it on their own at 2 a.m. if they really want to, you know, look at something if they have to. And then once you give them the knowledge, then they can reach back out to you if they're serious and they can, you know, get a hold of you. That, that, yeah. I mean, that's just an idea, just instead of having to re create, I mean, you're a huge fan of doing checklists and creating systems and, you know, do a video for something. And then when the process takes place, here's the video, here's how you do it, go on. That, that would be, that's, that's what I'd say. What about you? Well, my, my natural reaction would be, would also be don't bother. But Glenn says one of his guys did put 55 people in the room, got five listings. It was the theme of the seminar was changing markets. So that was the that was the messaging of the seminar, which is interesting. Well, changing markets. Is, well, also we got to understand. I mean, I'm not Glenn. You know, I'm not belittling that that comment in the slightest. Uh, but Australia is di a little bit different. There are no buyers agents. There's only listing agents. Um, so I mean, that I think that that's why it could be highly effective here. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, I think I love the title. It's sexy. It's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, 55, ugh, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, one of the one of the sexiest email subject lines we sent out at viral marketing across at that time, 150 clients, was um, either real estate predictions with a month or a year, or real estate trends. Mm. Uh, so people are very interested in, like Glenn said, changing markets. They're interested in trends. Uh, Glenn says probably a, a more of a case of no one else ever having done it, so they were marketing in a vacuum. Yeah, which is, that, yeah. and that could be a very very big you know, thing to do is, I mean, a very, very true part about that. So, yeah, I mean, the, the ideal for me in terms of moving that down is I see content like that as being a way to move people further down the funnel. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to hold something like a buyer seminar, I wouldn't do it to a cold audience expecting to get cold leads from it. I would go to a warm audience if I had one. The only way I would do a home buyer seminar is if I had people that were circling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I had, I had, 10, 15, 20 buyers who were all needed to be educated and they were all in my pipeline. And I wanted to send out a message to them and say, Hey guys, you're all looking around the same time. We're working together. We're really working hard to find the right home for you. Let's talk about what the next step is. So once we find your home, we go to make an offer. You can already know exactly what the next stage is and what, what you're, you know, be comfortable with that so that we can pull the trigger quickly. And then by the way, if you have any friends that are also in the market, feel free to bring them. But I would, I would use that as a way to get more FaceTime with the people that are already in my pipeline rather than hold it, go 
partner up with a title or, or a mortgage person on the hopes that somehow people are going to magically sign up and go from a cold ad on Facebook uh, to actually showing up for something. I mean, it's Glenn, we had that experience with the uh, with the real estate event. It's extremely difficult to get people from a cold audience running a Facebook ad to cold traffic and getting them to drop everything, register for an event and then actually show up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we still had a very good show up. We had, I don't know, 200 plus people show up to that event. Um, and we had like seven or 800 people RSVP. So we had a quarter quarter show up out mm -hmm. of what we uh, what registered, which is exactly what was in line. So, I mean, we did pretty damn well for that. But, yeah, it, it is, it's hard to going into a cold list, man. You got to build credibility. I mean, you have to bring value. You have to do so many mm -hmm. things in a short amount of time. And your dollar ad spend to get the cold leads into the warm leads, as Gary Keller has put it, the Mets and the have not Mets, the Mets are way easier than the have not Mets. You know, the proportions are just staggering. Yeah, we were talking about today and getting out of business, just how the whole point of even reaching out to a cold audience of people, people that you don't know, is to as quickly as possible move them from people that you don't know into people that you do know and hopefully find a mutual connection, whether it's a mutual interest or an actual person that you have in common, because immediately that personalizes you. It makes you a real human being and it makes them much more likely to, it makes the trust a lot easier to build. Uh, just finding that thing that you have in common with somebody, whether it's an interest, a hobby, an affinity, a group, a mutual connection, you know, alumni, you went to the same college, you go to the same church, you're in some, some of the same LinkedIn group, whatever it is, mm -hmm. like any type of connection like that, that takes them from just being a cold kind of stranger to you and into your outer circle of your world. Um, the goal is to just get that to happen as quickly as possible with as many people as possible and then move them from that into having real conversations. Because I was just I was just thinking about this. I spent freaking five hours uh, with Frank from Viral Marketing over the weekend just hanging out. We got like the kids together and him and his wife and my girl and the kids went off and then they allowed me and Frank graciously to just shoot the shit on business for like five hours. Um, so in that five hour conversation, uh, it, it just it, it reaffirmed to me just how conversations are the lifeblood of our business. The more conversations and the better conversations we have, the more money we make. And the thing that, that agents forget, and we all forget, consultants forget it, coaches forget it, whatever. But we all sit back and we do we we do activity. We're busy. We're meeting with people. You know, we're 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 doing a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, how many conversations did you have? No. And I'm exactly. really like zeroing in on that. Well, that's why it goes back to the 25 business cards that I've talked about forever in a day, because you've had a conversation, you had some sort of interaction with somebody. Uh, and then like Heather said on the getting out business today, she's like, well, when we first started talking about it, she's like, there's no way I meet 25 people every day. And then she found out as she went through the classes and we helped her kind of open her eyes to everything that she is coming into contact with 25 people or more a day. And she's giving out the cards to them because they're, they're, in a conversation doesn't need to be like the meaning of life. OK, it doesn't need to be like if you guys are soulmates or whatever else. It's just like, hey, hey, Matt, how are you? Here's my laundry. Thanks for doing the dry cleaning. Great. Here's my I'll take them back. Here's my business card. If you ever need any help, let me know. Right. That's a conversation. Right. It doesn't need to be su super in depth. I think a lot of people misunderstand the, the, the meaning of a conversation. I mean, a conversation, if you're at say, if you're at Starbucks and you're having a conversation with the barista about the pastries or the sandwiches or the coffee or just kind of bantering, that is a conversation. Here's a card. Here's two. Lose one, keep one. Right. Yeah. And and move and move forward. He, yes, yes, he might feel a little bit funny, but guys, would you rather feel funny or would you rather, you know, have someone calling and be like, hey, I met you like three days ago. you I was at the blah blah blah. And I kept the card. Here's someone you should call. And that's that's mm -hmm. uh, that's as hard as it is. It's yeah. simple, but it ain't easy. Yeah. Very good point. All right, Jason Mitchell, what is the best type of script for a brand new agent to convert online leads when you're facing not having a history of sales? Guys, we train people that aren't agents on how to convert online leads. I've never heard them come back and all the time we work for them and go, well, how many deals have you done? Or how many deals has the agent you're calling on behalf done? Ever. That has never come up. Never, never. never. It's all about your, your connection with them. Can you build a bond? Can they honestly know that like, hey, look, I, I like this person, you know, so Jason, for not being in sales, you know, people are going to do business with the people that they know, like and trust. And so if they don't know you, hopefully you get them to like and trust you. 
And that's just by being you, being a human being with your personality, um, you're going to attract some people and you're not going to not attract some people. And you have to be okay with that in the beginning. You can hone in on your sales skills. You can hone in on your scripts, but just mm -hmm. start, just be you. That's why I'm wearing a freaking t-shirt right now. Like, you know, basically saying like California Republic and just kicking it with my cargo shorts on wearing flip-flops. I'm being me. I've made a decision. I just want to be fucking comfortable, dude. And my next, I just want to be comfortable in everything I do. I'm so tired of not being comfortable so I can look good for everybody else. Ugh, hate that idea right now. Um, but I mean, I'm being me and I'm sitting here, I'm pricing at a $10 million home where Midori and I are working aggressively to you know get a home ready for 1.4 million that we're, that's a past client of ours for me to do open houses and brokers tours. And I'm still just wearing this and I'm, I'm, I'm who I am. So be who you are you know, and people will naturally gravitate towards you. And by the way, guys, the $10 million listing, I showed up with an untucked dress shirt on, uh, shorts and vans on and cruise the, cruise the house. He, the owner was wearing the same thing. Right. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to you, people put too much uh, emphasis on what the script is, what the procedure is. You get a baseline of that, but then be you. And maybe that's just almost 19 years of, of real estate you know, that just it comes as like breathing. Like you've been, made that comment to me several times. Mm -hmm. um, go out and look at, I mean, if you want to PM me, Jason, and you and I can have a sidebar conversation about this and I can give you some stuff off air. Um, but just remember to be you. Matt, your thoughts? Uh, I don't have a lot on that particular one. <laughs> How's that? Wow. Mark that 3:30 p.m. on uh -huh. July 31st. Matt was speechless. Had no thoughts on subject matter. Well, I mean, I, I gave you my thoughts up front, which is that uh, that 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 objection literally never comes up, <laughs> so so it shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be an issue. That's one of those things where it's all in your head. But yeah, it, it is about building a connection with them. And one of the things we noticed in training ISAs is, is that the biggest opportunities that they miss when they're making those calls is the opportunities that the person they're calling gives them to go deeper on the personal stuff, and they don't take it because they're so focused on what they want out of the call, which is an appointment, that they skip the opportunities that the homeowner or buyer on the other end of the line is giving them to delve into their personal life where you can actually build a connection with them and build trust. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, like, if you want to really get in the door with somebody, um, they have to trust you to a certain level based on how you come off to them over the phone. And if you can't build that trust, then they're not going to let you come over for an appointment, no matter how much you want it, no matter how much you grind and hustle and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, and that's one of the quickest ways to build trust is just to be genuinely interested in them, but still, but within the context of still knowing what your goals are for the call. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean talk to grandma who's 85 years old and isn't going to go out of her house and anything but a pine box. Talking to her for an hour on the phone doesn't do you any good, but talking to you know a couple in their mid 30s who have a couple kids and one on the way and spending 20 minutes with them just going wherever they want with the call and then uh you know building that connection and following up with them later that is valuable very valuable because that yeah. does build a connection i've been caught by gam gam a couple of times and when gram gam gets her claws in you that's you can't right. you can't like you can't grant gam gam's got you for the rest of the prospecting yeah, hour. Got you. that's right fucked. All right. Um, so let's see. Walter says, I agree with the outfit, but as I'm only 19, the people in my town judge me if I'm not in a suit. It's fine. I've learned to live with it. Yeah, agreed. It's San Diego. We're a little um, superficial. How's that? Um, yeah. So Isaac Maximov, is it really feasible to think that a new agent can come into the industry and land 60 agents, uh, 60 listings, sorry, 60 listings, as long as he makes a thousand contacts a month for a year, door knocking and cold calling six hours a day? Fuck yeah. So that's 30 contacts a day, every day of the month, day in, day out for Absolutely. a year. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a numbers game. If you make 30 contacts a day, seven days a week, 364, well, let's, let's be real here, like 350 days out of the year. Because you got now, you have holidays, like big holidays that just no one's working at all. It'd be ludicrous for you to call on Christmas Eve or Christmas or New Year's or something like that or Thanksgiving Day or Easter I mean, if you want to be a jackass, you can call an Easter. But, um, I mean, not too many people are going to be like, hey, hi. I like little bunny foo-foo. Oh, ring, 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 ring. Hello? Yes, I do want to sell my house. That's amazing you called me. Yes, put the eggs down, sweetie. Okay, yes, that's great. No, not going to happen. <laughs> Chris, your business partner's laughing at you. He just oh, walked in to that. This is Chris. This is the one that puts up with me. This is a, a, a wee tyke. Oh, my God, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I would agree. So I agree with Isaac that if you're really doing that, I mean, if you build a database of 12,000 people in a year, 
yes, you can absolutely take 60,000 listings. You would have to actively suck, and I mean suck on an epic level, or or you'd have to be you'd have to come across as such a massively giant douche. douche. I mean, you'd have to come across a douche. Now, that's not to say that won't happen. I can't remember who was telling me about this, but they did run into somebody where they got a hold of them as a coaching client, and it was someone in the Midwest, and they had been they had made 500 expired listing calls or something like that, and hadn't taken a single, couldn't get a single appointment, not a listing. They couldn't get an appointment on 500 calls. Well, it turns wow. out he was calling and going, "Hey, uh, this is uh, this is blah blah with uh, KW. You want to sell your home? No? Okay. Yeah, I can't you know imagine. Like it they were." Yeah, like he was a giant. He was, he was just a, a unintentional douche and didn't realize what he was doing. D. <laughs> Douchebag. So Isaac, absolutely. By the way, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there, there's been we've heard of agents doing, you know, 50, 80, 100 deals in their first year. Uh, I mean, at that point, it's just 100% pure, smart hustle. Going after expired, if you live in the right area, going after expireds and FISBOs, circle prospecting, doing a ton of open houses. Like if you just tr combine the tried and true and you work hard at it, um, I mean, in this market, if you can just get the listing, most likely it'll sell. Um, you don't have to be a, a brain, you don't have to be a super experienced agent to get the home to sell. Uh, I would consider if you're really going for 60 listings, start looking for a transaction coordinator right now, because literally as soon as you take five listings, it will feel like you have no life. Uh, and if you don't have a transaction coordinator lined up to help you out with that stuff, it will bog you down and you'll stop prospecting. Yeah, you will. Yeah, and you will not have a life. It's not going to feel like you don't have a life. You literally won't have a wife and or a life. Um, <laughs> right. So, you know, take advantage of the, of the resources around you if you have to partner up with someone to help you kind of get your wheels turning your feet underneath you, because that's a lot to do in one year. And I hope you haven't overestimated your ability versus your time, uh, because you will you will need a day or two off here and there just to recharge your batteries, because you running at 50 or 75 percent of your full potential is not fair if you can take a half a day or a day off every week and run at 100 percent of your potential. Because the people, if they're going to entrust you with their business, they need 100% of you all the time. So be kind to yourself, be kind to your family, be kind to your business, and mark time off for yourself. I talk to so many agents all the time that do not take time off for themselves. And I just want to smack them because, I mean, I was like, dude, look, I, it's not like I am i don't know what I'm talking about. I've watched my father, watched my business partner, i watch watched myself, i watch watched other agents. All, all of us burn out when because you just work too damn much. Yeah. So take time for yourself unequivocally yep agreed all right so uh james colburn awesome james glad that you are watching uh guys go buy his book resucceed by the way yeah uh, james says actually book. building tr building trust could be our entire business if you think about it grandmaster type skill and acumen it's funny you mentioned the grandmaster because that's that's exactly what your dad excels at and is why he's the grandmaster people trust him like he is a grand he's not a father he's a grandfather like oh, people yeah. <laughs> He's not just old. He's real old. No, he just comes. He just comes across as a kind, like as someone that genuinely looks out for your best interest. No, yeah, he really does, and that's why. I mean, I like I told you guys a hundred times. I'll watch him go into it. I don't have it around me. I like walk into a listing appointment, turn the shoot over, do an L, do a line up the middle, and just doodles. And mm -hmm. lean. He leans back in chairs, crosses his legs, puts one arm over the one side of the chair. He sits there like he's sitting in his living room talking to like a good friend of twenty years. The other people all rigid and shit like. Mm -hmm. Listen to appointment. He's like, "What's up, man? What was for dinner, by the way? It smells great in here. Is that garlic? Oh, I love garlic." <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's your strategy for the day. Comment on dinner. Uh, hey, and they're like, "Yeah, it was the takeout my wife got because she won't cook." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the name of that restaurant. Uh, so there, there is a question that I don't want to handle, which is from Melissa. Uh, it says, what's your favorite uh, approach and script for expireds? Greg, you don't have hardly any. An expire would be a rarity. Uh, and so, Melissa, keep your eye out because me and Aaron, uh, I'm helping him with expired mastery elite, which is uh, expireds are Aaron's bread and butter. I mean, he makes, you know, uh, probably 250 to 300K a year off of uh, off of expired listings. And well, so, so, yeah, he is, he is watching. Reach out so. to Aaron. He's, he's, he's watching right now. Yeah, Aaron. PM. Reach out to her, and yep. you guys get that uh, get that connection going over there. That's right. Okay, so uh, Elijah has an interesting question. How does one become an REO agent or get into BPOs, broker price opinions? Straightforward answers, please. Apparently, he's got a lot of non-straightforward answers. Um, and is it possible for newer agents, and is it worth it? So he's a new agent. 
basically looking for a different option to just straight residential business. So would you encourage going into something like REOs and short sales and BPOs and all that good take, stuff? It's going to take a while. I mean, you got to be a numbers guy and you got to go make relations with the banks and the, the right people at the banks. So when the REOs and the, you know, the market starts to dip again, I mean, they are not going to just hand them out to anybody. I don't give a fuck who you are. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to show them that you can run the numbers. So start small, start with a, maybe someone who can give you one or two a month, show them that they know you, they, you know what they're doing because you have to earn that business one way or the other. It's a, I mean, if they're going to hand over all of those foreclosures to you, you've got to, you know, probably bend over and take it up the tailpipe at some point for some on something, maybe mm -hmm. hit on your commissions, maybe, maybe something. But I mean, if the bank's going to hand you 20, 30, 50 listings a month, you got to be able to price them, have the systems in place you know, to make to handle it personally. That sounds like a nightmare, absolute nightmare. I don't have the patience for it, and I hate numbers. So no. <laughs> yeah, and I would also throw in just knowing guys that have done it, like Christian Peter and Michael Helix and stuff like that. Um, they were respected, successful listing agents before the crash and before they got into REOs and they were able to take that track record and more importantly they were able to take not just the track record but the proven marketing system right the system for how they marketed and got homes sold they were able to take that to the banks and that's part of how they got the credibility to then go get you know more listings from banks and that it all snowballs so in order to get that first deal if you're a newer agent at the very least you need to have you know a 150 point marketing plan or something like that uh that shows that you know how to actually market properties and that you this is what you do and with demonstrated evidence of success and all that good stuff so uh that's that's my quick marketing perspective on yeah, that in the, so. in the bank on this one uh, you know if you if you're doing well doing well and then you slip up every once in a while bam they can take everything away from you because they own yeah. the listings yeah so, that's, I mean, that's an excellent point um, I mean, Michael Hellickson got his entire business taken away because he relied overnight. on REOs and bank owned literally overnight because he built because uh, he built on that foundation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the bottom line is if, if you're new, um, probably the worst thing that you can do is run from this, the necessity of just the basics of the business. You know, open so, houses. Yeah. Calling people, um, having conversations, building your database, making contact with your sphere of influence, you know, just the basic but, stuff, you know. Yeah, there's the other side of that. If he wants to get into the REOs and everything like that, then he could get into wholesaling. He could put a lot of his time and effort into doing like the, you know, the, the low ball Louie, kicking a property for 30% under the market price because the people got to go or whatever else. There's a guy named Marco out of San Diego area that his business does that. They find people all around the country who will sell for uh, lower than market price because they have to sell now. Um, and then he flips them over to an investor or just flip them over to an investor yourself. And you can, you can make a quick 10, five, 10, 15, 20, 20 grand off of it. Not the whole commission because the investor is going to take, needs to take some, take some money out of that. But there's that, the wholesale side too, if you want to get into that type of business. Hmm, interesting. Okay. All right. So we've got time for a couple more questions, man. That got a lot of likes and hearts for some reason. Um, thanks guys. Appreciate it. By the way, make sure that you put down where you're at guys so that the other listeners and viewers can keep you in mind for referrals. Uh, and anytime you hear a, a question or a comment that you especially enjoy, let us know, hit that like and heart button. That way we know kind of what content you are guys are really gravitating towards. So we can always talk about that a little bit more. Um, so kit, has a question. I'm working a vacation rental listing. Property needs freshening up, and the seller wants to list at the very top end of the comps, but then says, we'd like to not be out of pocket for any drape cleaning or other staging activities. Would these costs be covered by you? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> this is your house, homeboy. Unless you want to bump my commission to cover those when I sell the home, I just want to go out of pocket, no mm -hmm. problem. But I'm not going to be, this is your home. You make the equity on this thing. I'm just, you're hiring me to sell this thing. That's, that's what my responsibility is. Um, now, if we're talking like five, $10 million homes, okay, we can cover something here for you. Not a problem. Okay. You know, because, you know, there's no guarantee those high price homes are going to sell. But when it does sell, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze at right. the end of the day. But you protect your commissions, guys. And people are going to try to wiggle and, and you know weasel their way into your money because they don't think you do enough for the money. You've got to show them up front what you do for your cash. And then don't back down. And, you know, I've lost, you know, deals over that because I'm not going to work for a fraction of what I'm actually worth and the amount of liability I take on. I just wouldn't, I just won't do it. So you guys need to think about it, you know, yourselves. Are you going to be a discount broker? Or are you going to be a, a, a professional? It's up to you. Yeah, agreed. 
Yeah. And when it, when it comes time to like, um, cause, cause I've been in that situation and it, and it's tough and it's not easy and all that, but just like a quick marketing perspective on that would be to like Greg, you talked about like listing, you know, doing a list, you know, kind of right at the market, at the top of the market or at the bottom of the market. Right. Which means I think if you, if you preface like part of the reason, part of the way that you can avoid having those things come up is say, look, you know, where, where do you want to list at? Would you, you know, do you want to list at the top of the market, right where the market's at or below market so that you sell it quick and with, with a little hassle as possible. And then when they say at the top of the market, then it has to go along with great. Well, what goes hand in hand with that? Here's what buyers expect at the top of the market. They expect it to be move-in ready. They expect it to be neutralized. They expect to come into a home and there's, you know, there's not a bunch of pictures. There's no clutter. It's all clean. It's fresh. It's repainted. It smells amazing. It smells like cookies. And someone greets them at the door and offers them a hot washcloth as they walk, you know, walk into a, you know, moisten, moisten their forehead. I like um, this already, you, Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, the, that's what they're, that's where all the strippers are. The strippers that weren't at the strip club where you were at the other night, they're all, <laughs> at, they're all at the open house. They're all handing out hot towels. Um, they're going to need it for their line of work. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, you know, so I think if you, if you set those expectations that, Hey, if you want to sell at the top of the market, here's what te- that, here's what that takes. And I'm going to help guide you on the decisions in terms of where, like, that's going to take some investment of time and money and effort to get your home to the point where you can list it at the top of the market. If you're not willing to make that investment or you're unable or whatever the case is, that's no problem. But you can't you can't list at the top of the market and not put it in the condition the home condition that the sell you know buyers expect from a home that's listed at the top of the market. That's just a recipe for sitting on the market. So, so you just have to actually, explain it in those terms. You don't even put your commission on the table. No, I actually had a uh, one of my sellers actually talk to me about that. You know, their home it was in need of a dramatic updating, let's put it that way. And there are multiple different issues along the lines. And if the home was in pristine condition, it would have sold for two to $400,000 more than what we are now under contract for. But mm-hmm. the seller never saw it that way. He just saw it as if he had discounted it $350,000. And I said, no, Mr. Seller, actually, we've only come off it by about 50000 off of our list price that we should have gone in at. And you're just thinking about, you know, all the other people that are selling for the next three hundred grand in the neighborhood, but your home is not the same. It's the same size and the same bed and bath count, but the quality of finish is night and day. But people don't see that all the time. They only see what everyone else is doing and not what their home is doing. Unfortunately, it's kind of a bummer, but it is that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, what else we got, Johnson? So, uh, yeah, let's see. If question on forms, that sounds like a great way to just pull out my own eyeballs. Um, okay. <laughs> my apologies. So, Dude, who wrote that? Matt didn't mean that in that horrible term. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't care, I don't care about it. There's a form to sign. Who cares about that? Um, all right. So Frida says, buyer, buyer objection. It's too expensive. So what's what's your reply? Uh, I'm sure you get this a lot, Greg, working with uh, working with buyers in the Bay Area. I mean, don't they go into uh, to the market and go, man, alive? Like these homes are, man, they, they better be like, uh, they got to come with like some 24 karat gold bullion or John, John Wick is buried his gold, gold coins in the basement or something. <laughs> yeah, this is John Wick reference. Oh my God, that's awesome. Um, so something that uh, when it comes to pricing, if they're coming from like the Midwest or something, let's say uh, you, were, you when you came out here and you were, you know, you, Julie, and your three obese little wood denting little obese babies. Naturally. We're going, we're going to fly out here on a heavy yeah. lift air transport. Car- cargo plane, cargo commercial. transport. That's right. Oh yeah. yeah we, can't, we can't fly commercial. Mm-mm, go right through the flying. That's right. um, but <laughs> the things that hold tanks is what you fly in. Uh, but you know, when you got out here, I mean, you buying a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home there, or two hundred thousand dollar home in Omaha, Nebraska, like you, you, we were going over this and getting out of business. That like a three hundred and sixty thousand dollar home there is what I paid for my condo, and dude, that was like a three or four car garage, two store, probably a four bed, three bath on third, four, third, or even larger piece well, of I land. Think, yeah. You know, and you can't compare and contrast. When my parents and I moved here, and when I was in second grade, and they were moving from. Boulder, Colorado, then to Madison, Wisconsin, and then here, dude, their eyes bugged out when they saw the prices of the homes here. And my parents bought a beater of a house. The front was actually different colors than the back of the house. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, but this is the home they've been in for 35 years here, and they've made it absolutely drop dead gorgeous now. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you have got to set the expectations for these poor folks when they're coming in from other marketplaces. And you have to ask them, is this a want buy? or a need 
buy. And if it's a want buy, and you can talk them into maybe renting for a little while or doing something, let the market come down. I would, you know, do that. If it's a need buy, say, okay, if you guys, it's a long-term play, get ready to, you know, you may be buying near the top of the market. If that's okay with you, let's get you, let's get you into a property. But people will buy what they want and they will pay what is needed. I was, I met a guy named Bob um, when Lily and I were at dinner last night at a place called Tony's in uh, Little Italy, North Beach in, in uh, San Fran. This dude just sat down, sat down, kicked it with us. Ended up, this guy is just loaded. I mean, like he buys and sells his, like this, he's buying a brand new, you know, penthouse or not a penthouse, but a like really nice condo for it's They start it for a million and he didn't buy the beginner set. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but he was talking about the fact that when he didn't want to sell his St. Regis condo that he had, but another couple came in and just like said that they would pay anything. He said he, he went to his realtor and said, I will pay, you know, I, I will, what, what's the highest price per square foot anything has ever sold for ever in San Francisco? Then I'm going to add 10%. That's my price. <laughs> the couple bought it. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah, guess, guess what the price per square foot back a year ago was the highest ever sold in San Francisco. Wow. 3,800 a square foot. Ooh. 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 <laughs> For those of you listening on the iTunes version, Greg and I both throw up. <laughs> <laughs> but they paid it. But that's my point yeah. is like yeah. buyers will pay for what they want because they want it or need it. Okay. And so if they're like, oh, that's expensive. Lay it out. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. This is the reason why. Here's what's going to happen. This is what the market looks like. Blah, 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 blah. And let them go from there and and then have you know put them in contact with a company like unison who we've had on the show before where they partner up with the homeowner to help them raise their um effectively double the uh the amount of their down payment so that they can afford potentially a more expensive home and still get in and get their monthly payments to where they're comfortable so it's an option sorry yeah. we have a, my team's in the back that's why i have a, I'm gonna keep oh you muted yourself okay gotcha yeah all right so last question laronda thompson uh i've been calling calling old expireds and fizbos and want to know what's the best response when the person says they decided to stay what questions should i ask to dig deeper <laughs> you guys see what glenn twiddle posted <laughs> okay take a day off says greg mcdaniel Pop! batman slapping robin <laughs> that's awesome dude <laughs> Oh, can you can you re, can you re-ask the question? I was reading that and just getting too much of a yes. for that. <laughs> uh, I've been calling old expireds and fizbos, and I want to know what the best response is when the person says they decided to stay. What questions should I ask to go deeper? I don't want to. Do okay, it, so, so you know, I'm glad you guys are thinking about staying around. You know, help me understand a little bit to the you know what, how long do you guys ever plan on selling? Bye, Chris. Chris is leaving. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's a. Uh, are you thinking about selling? Okay. Why did you decide not to sell? Would you, at what price would you become a seller again if I found someone with a bag of cash? Right. Because okay. everybody has a price. I don't care how generic that is. Everybody has a price. Okay. If someone came into, you know, my condo, which I absolutely love, and I hopefully never leave, which I know I will someday, but you know, not for a while. But if they're, they're like, I'm like, I'm not leaving. If they're like, Greg, I will give you a million dollars. I'm like, I'll leave and leave the cats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have the cats. You'll give up your beloved cats. No, I wouldn't really. Okay. But I'd give everything else up. But you can keep my clothes. Uh, um, but I mean, I will literally leave and never come back, and you can have all my stuff. You're the keys player. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly can I sign the paperwork? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I guess that's true. Just find yeah, out what their pain like, point is. Buy me like a nice, like a new drum set, a new seven string bass. I'm just looking all around here. Is there anything that I would keep if somebody just offered me a million dollars from my home? No, nope, probably not. <laughs> just walk away. All the books I have, I can rebuy on Amazon. Yep, yep, yep. You sure can buy the new editions, the That's collector right. editions, the limited That's editions. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, just figure out what their pain point is. I'll joke inside. Figure out what their pain point is. Okay. Solve the pain point. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I think Probably the first question I asked would be great. Like what, what changed? Sounds like you were pretty intent on getting your home sold. Like what, what changed in the last, you know, X number of hours or whatever, since, uh, since your home came off the market, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's the first question is just, well, nothing changed. We just decided, you know, like that's the worst possible answer they can give is they give you nothing and you're like, go oh, great. Well, what I'm, I, I guess I'm a little confused. Um, you know, what caused you to put your home on the market in the first place? Yeah, you know, and then you lead them down that path to okay, well, you know, if I'm, I would love to just continue to keep an eye out for buyers because I work with a lot of buyers. I meet with a ton of people. You know, it, let just give me a ballpark number if there's anything I can keep an eye out for. So that if somebody's looking for a home like yours, I can keep you in mind. And just what's the number? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Find the, find the point point, find the number. And you know what, if they will move, if you, if you solve their problem to the, to their full satisfaction. Yeah. (laughs) To their full, full satisfaction. Unfortunately, the, the strippers were not, uh, were not to your full satisfaction. Well, that's because they, they, they were, there were none, 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 the the number of strippers. It yeah. just wasn't around. There's like, you can hear the little heels clacking down the hallway. No one's going to tip me. Uh-huh. That's actually what I, I think told. they're just afraid of Lily. <laughs> yeah. If, if, they, if they look at you wrong, she'll just like, you know, kick oh, her. You don't, you don't fuck with Lily. No, yeah, no. Exactly. I didn't think so. Exactly. She'll throw punch her ass. She gives you All right, guys. And All you're right. just like, am I in trouble? Or am I not in trouble? She mm-hmm. just scares me for a couple extra seconds. She goes, no, why? I'm just thinking. I'm like, well, look somewhere else and look like that and think, damn, no, no, no. <laughs> the shit out of me. <laughs> That's funny. Did I do something wrong? Um, okay. All right, guys. That's enough for us today. We've answered a ton of questions and uh, delivered a, a lot of content, and we had a lot of fun interacting with you guys here on the Facebook yeah. comments, guys. So if you're listening to it after the fact, first of all, we appreciate it. And please subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher on all that. But make sure to to, uh, to keep an eye out for us. Go to Greg's uh, Facebook uh, you know, personal profile. Make sure that you follow him. Turn the mm. notifications on. That way you know exactly when we broadcast the show live because we do want to interact with you and engage with you like on the show live. We love to do that it's a ton of fun for us uh it's fun for you you get to ask us questions and uh and post funny memes like like glenn did on (laughs) greg's page after the show which is always fun so feel free to do that and if you guys have a hater comment please post it as well because we love to read those so if you guys don't like the show even better put a comment in the facebook stream here and we will read it on a special segment called greg reads hate mail so uh, to quote the great taylor swift haters gonna hate 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 all right don't do that ring it no no it's kind of bad about rendition i don't think (laughs) i'm gonna get called back from the record company Uh, i don't think so (laughs) nope all right guys so uh make sure to go to getnowbusiness.com check that out greg why should they do that because Matt, we're damn nice people. And also, hey guys, you know, if you guys just go follow us, follow me and Matt, you'll see the awesome lives he does, the lives that I do, the live cold calls I do. If I, I have about 30 minutes until I go live as this live recording, so I can annoy the shit out of Majori and John by playing really loud music and doing cold calls, which they will not be here because they will run for the hills. Mm-hmm. Also, guys, getting out of business is something that you guys should definitely get in and invest in a little bit. It's 297. It's a one-time fee. You got access to not only your class, but all the previous classes classes and all the future classes as well all the bonus material in your class and in the future classes so the value does not stop just there also if you think matt and i just suck well i'm not gonna say that that just sounds weird if you if you and i if everyone thinks that you and i just suck <laughs> then um you, we will i we will do one of two things we pay the 297 we will give you your money back or we will take that 297 and we will go put that towards any other coaching program on earth if you feel it's more valuable than what we brought you, uh, so there you really lose nothing. Either you get good content or you get good content, you screw us over, and then you go get even better content. It's really whatever you want to do. But guys, I don't know. <laughs> Matt's just like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, Oh, and on top of that, we'll give you access to Rockstar Prospecting. Yeah. We'll give you access to Rockstar Prospecting at no cost. So, yep. you guys, right. it's a win, 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 win. And we only have 20 spots. They are filling up. We are near. We are halfway full right now, and we are – not even close to the launch date. When did we launch, Matt? The seventh? We launched the seventh. Uh, the, the, the actual 14th. first session is on August eighth, Tuesday. August eighth. Oh, sorry, yep. we moved to Tuesday. August eighth, yep. guys. I'm gonna put in the links again. Matt, do you wanna say anything about following us? Yeah, we'll make sure to follow us on Facebook. Do not friend us. In fact, I got a friend request here on Facebook while we're uh, live here that I cannot accept. Uh, Greg, <gasps> you cannot accept it. And uh, so, guys, make sure to follow us. Uh, if uh, Unless you're someone I've had a, uh, ha- an, an actual telephone or in-person conversation with, I do not accept a random friend requests uh, from viewers of the show uh, for many, many reasons. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Greg cannot. Uh, he You literally go into Facebook pur- purgatory. So make sure to follow mm-hmm. us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the primary way of interacting with us. Um, if you follow us, you'll get all of our great content. You can uh, potentially message us, and we may get it, uh, depending <laughs> on how Facebook treats it. <laughs> but uh, we'd love to see messages here on Facebook on the show while we're live so that we can answer your questions because oh. that is the most fun thing for us to do. Paul Franklin, dude, never do that again. <laughs> so many talking about my my Taylor Swift rendition of uh, Hera. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Thank you. Oh that made my day. All right, man. Yeah. Let's put a little bow on this bitch and put it home. What do you say? Sounds great. Guys, make sure to subscribe to the show, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, all the good places. Go to reuncensored.com to check out everything that we have going on.
Yep. All right. Peace out, ninjas. We're gone.